Good afternoon once again, everyone. This is round three of our Isotopes Clubhouse Confidential. We are still here inside Salt River Field, Scottsdale, Arizona for the Rocky Spring Training. I'm Josh Susha alongside Kyle Freeland. Spent the last half of the uh, 2016 season with us in Albuquerque. Uh, so Kyle, let me start with this. Began the season in Hartford. You guys, every game was a road game. So you had no fans cheering for you the first two and a half months of the season. Then you get to Albuquerque, and all of a sudden you're pitching in front of these big, huge, enthusiastic crowds. Describe what that was like. It was it was pretty crazy that that first uh, first part of the season not not being able to have you know a home crowd supporting you really, and then going to Albuquerque and having thousands and thousands of people there uh, cheering you on. It was it was kind of comforting knowing that you could go somewhere and uh, and have you know a good solid fan base. Do you notice a difference between single A to double A, double A to triple A? Like, can you notice something, or is it just more subtle things? Uh, I'd say it's probably more subtle things um, with the game speed, fans, and everything. It's it's definitely smaller things. What about PCL travel? You guys are on the bus, Hartford, everywhere, and then you get to the Pacific Coast League, and it's not exactly the easiest travel. And I remember that one game; it was an all-day travel to Oklahoma City. You're pitching that day, but it was still one of your best outings of the year. Yeah. Um, so I guess you got to take it as you know, if, if you don't mind flying and stuff, uh, and and I don't. So. With that, you know, that one game traveling to OKC, I knew it was going to be an early morning. It was going to be a long day, and I had to pitch. But, you know, you know, just uh, keep your keep your focus throughout the day and, uh, and get done what you have to get done. One of the things that's been really fun to watch from afar is the way that new Rockies manager, Bud Black, has really done a lot of team-building activities. You were part of the team archery competition. You won first place. How much archery had you ever done in your life before, say, six weeks ago? So the first time I shot a bow was when I was playing summer ball up in Alaska in 2012. Since then, I haven't shot a bow since I got my first one this past offseason. So we're like, guys like Tom Murphy, like that's all he talks about during the season. I can't wait till the winter, can't wait till I get my bow so I can go out hunting in New York. That's all he talks about. How mad is he and other guys that this novice wins this competition? Uh, Mur Murph has told me multiple times that he wants a rematch. Okay. So we'll have to set that up at some point uh, once he's healthy. But uh, yeah, it's kind of crazy. I mean, you got uh, Holmes that's, you know, he makes his own arrows, has his own bow press and everything. You got Murph who hunts all the time. DJ got into it a couple of years ago, but yeah, it's pretty crazy that I've only shot for a few months and came, on, came out on top. So I've always thought that in this era of, uh, of, of athletics, if you're a kid, they really force you into just playing one sport and getting specialized. But I think it shows when, when you're playing, whether it's darts or the ping pong competition we saw today, and showing the different hand-eye coordinations. And I'm wondering how many different sports that you've played that kind of help become good at baseball because of the other stuff that you did. Uh, growing up, I played I played all uh, all the major sports: football, baseball, soccer, uh, you name it. Um, but yeah, I mean that was the way you know I was raised. I think it's a smart way for for kids to become athletic in different ways and uh, to learn different things and be competitive in different ways. We mentioned Bud Black and uh, the different team building activities. What have been some of the other fun stuff that you guys have done that are not baseball related that's been really fun in terms of just learning new things about each other and learning new things about life? Um, you, you basically said the ones that we did, you know, archery competition, ping pong, you know, it's just a way for us to... Did I see know, a steer? What was that all about? Weren't you so involved with that? I was, yeah. We, uh, we had a um, little project where we had to uh, learn about the Mumperts and our, our owners and uh, and everything like that and, and uh, Ryan Castellani had a hookup out here with his dad and we got we were able to get a steer and hear a cow in here. So were you able to like pinpoint? Okay, this is where this cut of meat comes from. This is where that cut of meat comes from. Yeah, we had, we had to learn learn about that and uh, and show him where uh, where certain cuts of meat came from. Now, how did that homework assignment compare to the toughest test that you ever had, say in high school or in college? <laughs> This this one was a uh, it was a little more fun. Okay. Um, you know, you, you, I kind of looked forward to doing it and, and learning about our uh, our front office and our owners, um, other than being in school having to do it once a week. So I know that I've asked you about this before. It seems like everybody asks you because you grew up so close to Coors Field. And how much does your family and friends just the excitement of, of a kid who's from Denver and how close you are to the major leagues, the possibility of all that? Uh, how, how much do you feel that and hear that on a day to day? Um, I don't hear it too much. Uh, I definitely feel it a little bit, and, I, and I'm definitely uh, looking forward to it. It's something that excites me, and uh, you know, I can't wait to share with my friends and family once I once I get to that moment. One thing that I've noticed, and I was told this before, is how close you and Jeff Hoffman are—the way that you guys compete uh, on the golf course and everywhere else. What are some of the stuff that you guys did this off season to continue to push each other and make each other better? So we were both 
moved out here. Uh, he moved out a couple weeks before I did, um, but we spent our whole off season out here. So working out together and golfing together, like you said, uh, multiple times a week, uh, always hanging out. It just kind of pushes us, and you know, we're just uh, you know there for each other and and want the best for each other. We talked to Jeff earlier, and he told us about how he got engaged this this off season, how he went to Maui. Uh, what did you think of uh, the romantic friend of yours and the way that he uh, the way that he proposed to his girlfriend now fiance? It was it was pretty cool. I uh, I actually uh, knew beforehand. He uh, he told me before they went down there. But uh, you know, very cool. Uh, congratulations to them. Very happy for him. But uh, did you give him any advice? Did you tell him what to do, what not to do? Did you? I'm gonna need to take advice from him. <laughs> okay. <on that. laughs> All right, Kyle. Thanks so much for your time. Uh, great to see you again. Uh, it was fun watching you pitch. Uh, we like to say this all the time, and I'm repeating myself, but selfishly, we want you back in Albuquerque because you're so good. But at the same time, we hope that you never go back to Albuquerque ever again. All right, thanks for having me. Thanks for watching, everybody. Hope we're entertaining you with the different uh, looks at former isotopes, who hopefully will be on to Denver this year so we can introduce you to the next wave of isotopes. Again, Thursday, April 6th is opening day. We look forward to seeing you that day and many others throughout the course of this season. Goodbye for now from Salt River Field in Scottsdale, Arizona.